Obviously for the early settlers here in Loch Gur, uh, shelter was an essential part of surviving and thriving here. And they were blessed when they came to Loch Gur because as you can see, the hills are covered in oak and ash trees, which would have been perfect for building the roof structure and the walls of their houses along with some limestone. And below in the wet areas in the marsh, you can see a vast expanse of water reed and willow, which is all you need to make a, a thatched roof to, to live under and keep yourself dry. So whether you were hunter gatherers who just wanted a temporary shelter to stay in for a few weeks or a few months and keep the rain off you, or the Bronze Age farmers who came later who wanted a long-term farmhouse and settlement, this, these materials are available freely and perfect for what they required. What you're looking for when you're cutting reed is long straight reed. Uh, this reed is actually really rough because obviously it hasn't been cut for a long long time. If you cut reed regularly or every year it actually grows straighter and finer um, and it's more usable and you get more of it. Uh, people often wonder if when we cut the reed does it kind of impact on the environment or prevent the use of it by animals or birds but actually it doesn't because in the winter time there's virtually nothing in it and then in the summer when the new growth arrives is when most of the birds come to use it and feed off it and the insects use it. So in fact cutting reed on a regular basis helps maintain reed beds and they do better. Um, in terms of using it for thatching, ideally like I say what you want is long straight reed and in terms of making it easier to cut Ideally, you don't have lots of last year's growth in it. So this it makes it kind of tough going. But I suppose when uh, the hunter-gatherers first arrived here, this is exactly what they would have encountered. Virgin reed that had never been cut before, just as it is, and it's what they would have used. I'm cutting it with a sickle, which is an amazing implement, which hasn't really changed in 10,000 years. It's such a fantastic design. Uh, mine is made of steel obviously, but back in the day it could have been made of bronze and before that I guess if you had to you could use a deer antler. Um, if it was sharpened it would probably be tougher going, but it would achieve the same aim, you know. So first you cut as much of it as you can and then you tie it into bundles. If you're cutting reed on your own in an average reed bed, you'd expect to get about somewhere between 50 or 60 bundles like that pile there a day and uh, to do an average like a small roundhouse you need like 800 or a thousand of them so like on your own you would be at it for a good few weeks but if you're a family group you could cut enough reed to uh, make your house in a small house in a couple of weeks or a big farmhouse in three or four and I kind of figure, particularly with the Bronze Age when there was more settlements than that, since a thatched roof lasts 15 or 20 years, they would have cut it as a metal. Where, you know, obviously you do three or four roofs every year and everyone would get together in a group and cut reed for the next few houses the next year. And that way the whole community could uh, quite easily be kept warm and dry with one reed bed like is here at Locker by a bunch of 20 or 30 people very easily, you know. It's fairly wet and spiky underfoot here and uh, it's great having a pair of Wellington boots. I presume back in the hunting gathering days, the, the Stone Age or the Iron Age, they'd have had to protect their feet with whatever they could. Um, they were tougher than us. I dare say if you could travel back in time with a bag of wellies to flog to them, they'd have loved you. Another little interesting thing, and it ties into the whole Loch Gur story is, as a general rule, there's nowhere to put your tool when you stop to gather it. So one would generally stick your hook in the ground like that, because that way you can find it again afterwards. After you've cut the reed, we tie it into bundles with some trusty old fashioned baler twine, sizal baler twine. I presume back in the, the Bronze Ages or the Stone Age, they didn't have it, but they, they could have possibly made some twine from raw hide or, or some kind of creeper or something. Or as I'll show you in a second, you can do it from bark if you're lucky. So you 
tie it tight. Tap it down. And there is a bundle of reed. So, only 800 to go. And as I was saying, there is another way of doing it, which sometimes works and sometimes doesn't if you really don't have baler twine available to you, which is you can use the willow bark if you can get a piece of it off. The trick is to try and get a long strip of it. Come off here in one continuous piece. Like so. Which you can then use. as a very natural and very effective alternative to twine. So it's probably fairly safe to assume that was one of the things that could have been done in the past. Once you had the reed cut of course you had to fix it to the roof at something and generally that would be fixed on with what are called scallops or scullub in Irish sometimes called spars in English. And the willow tree is one of the perfect trees for it. Generally you'd use willow or hazel, so whatever's to hand. So again, here in Loch Gur, you've got reed growing and you've got, you've got willow right here where you want it. So if you take a willow branch and cut it, again, this could have been done with a, a Bronze Age knife just as easy. You can then split it down the middle. Normally you'd gather the branches and take them home and do this by the fireside in the evening. But just to give you a sense of it, you've then split your willow in half. You can put a point on it. And that becomes a scallop or a staple, a wooden staple, which you hammer into the roof to hold the thatch in place. So again, right beside your reed bed you find the material you need you know and likewise if you wanted uh, longer bits of wood to actually hold the thatch in place you can get you can find lovely longer pieces of, of willow and split them it's worth bearing in mind that if you actually chop down these willow trees they don't die and they come back with thousands of these little shoots which are incredibly useful both for thatching and also for making baskets and fish traps and all the rest of it. So the uh, original settlers at Loch Gur would certainly have coppiced the willow in order to get loads of these ones. But as you see, it splits very easily in half. And then you've got two long lengths that you can use to hold the thatch on the roof. So you'd hold the thatch on with these and then drive the scallops through it to hold it on, which I'll show you in a bit up on the roof. This is the willow that we gathered yesterday down on the marsh from the tree. I cut a few more bits and brought them up. And obviously it has to be processed as, so that you can use it for thatching. And what you're doing is you're splitting it into what are known as scallops, or sometimes called scallops in English. Or in England they're called spars. And generally it was always willow or hazel that was used because it's got a lovely straight grain so it splits quite easily. And as well as that, I'll show you in a minute, it's got a long fibre, which means that it twists like a rope instead of snapping when you twist it. So essentially, because of the long fibre, it'll twist quite easily into a, into a lovely staple that you'll see we're going to use it in a minute on the roof. And this is exactly how they would have thatched thousands of years ago, the exact same process, you know. And that, this material is obviously freely available. Anywhere there's water, generally you'll find plants that are... Uh, good for keeping you dry is a beautiful thing with nature when it comes to that.
you want a nice sharp point on them so they drive into the thatch. And you'd process your material. I mean, if you get a beautiful long stick, you try and split it in half and use it as a long piece to hold the thatch together. Sometimes <laughs> it splits easier than others, which you'll always try, you know. And again, you know, all you need is a sharp knife or a sharp piece of bone or flint or whatever. It's the only tool you need to split the wood in half like that, you know. And once, you, once you've got your willow split into spars or scallops, as they're called in Irish, you'd be, here's a few I prepared earlier, <laughs> you'd be ready for thatching. And now, this, this reed we harvested yesterday, like I said, is, is exceptionally rough because it was the first time it was cut. Uh, when they were out harvesting reed, the original, the uh, early settlers here, they would have gone and searched around the reed bed looking for the best reed they could find, you know. Um, and like we said as well, if you at once the reed's been harvested for a couple of years, it actually grows straighter and finer and becomes more workable over time. And basically all you do to fix reed on a roof, I'm fixing it onto an existing thatched roof, which is how you'd repair it. Or if you're attaching a roof for the first time ever, you'd lash a load of this to the timber framework like this and then thatch it on top. Or quite often you'd use sod. You'd just cut some sod from the bog or nearby and lay that straight on your branches you'd use for your rafters. Just a bed, something that you can drive these scallops into. So you stick one and they just literally just drive in like wooden pegs. Another scallop or oh, wooden peg. If you're being really picky now, and the guy who taught me how to thatch was saying, he say you always put the scallops in uphill slightly. The theory being that even if the water did hit them, it runs down and off them, you know. But that's kind of a technical thing. But nonetheless, you can see the principle. All you need is some reeds from the marsh and some willow, and you can start making a thatch roof. Some type of lovely tree bark. <laughs> Let's stop there for a second. Hold that temporarily. Now, I use my lovely big knife here. Yeah. Get your fingers. place temporarily as we're travelling along. Now obviously I'm going to try on a pair of modern gloves. I presume it wasn't particularly difficult to make a pair of, of leather mittens, hide mittens of some kind to protect your hands because the simplest way to thatch very basically is just with your hands. We, can, we will use a mallet and we will use some wooden implements but just to get going. You would literally just do that. As you can see, it's quite very tight and it's quite firm. If you thatch into a uh, sod, it's even firmer. So that would be your first layer. Uh, thatching actually goes on the same as slates does. People don't always realize that. So having got your first layer on there, you then put another layer on. So 
like so. Again, mix it with this bar. There's a saying in Irish which we all learnt in school, or a lot of us learnt in school, Nihei La Na Guiha, La Na Skullub, which is usually translated as the windy day is not the day for thatching. But the actual, more accurate translation is the windy day is not the day for scallops, for scullub, which as you can see implies that you should never try and do something at the wrong time. And you can see why when it's windy it wouldn't be a great day for using scallops. Now, now, you can get more elaborate tools when, for doing modern patching, such as you get like it's called a it's called a bit, it's called a legate. It's like a wooden paddle with grooves in. I actually don't have one, but you can just use a mallet. And in fact, back to the Neolithic, if you'd absolutely nothing else, you could actually, as you can see, just use your hands. And although it looks kind of rough, that is a thatch. That's now the beginning of a thatch roof. The next layer goes on top like slates to cover this and on up the roof you go, you know. So you can see that with the materials that the uh, early settlers in Loch Gur could have gathered quite easily, it would have been very easy to make it to make a lovely waterproof roof quite easily, you know. And this is read from the Shannon cut out in Kuna just on the Clare side of County Limerick, you know, using the exact same tools, just the sickle. The guys who collect it actually travel by boat. They go down with the tide and up with the tide. It's the exact same plant, but it's that little bit finer because it's been harvested year after year, you know. And when these lovely thatched roofs were made in the Locker Heritage Centre, it was Shannon reed that was used on them originally, this, this self-same reed. And it's what I'm going to use on the cap up here in a minute. 